Hello and welcome to my fifth video in my un introduction to Unity series. Uh, before I start, I just want to give a quick shout out to Casper Jeff One for being my first commenter and for the kind words. But without further ado, we're going to drop into the terrain engine. Now, those of you who've been watching my videos probably know that I really like to make things interesting, and right now this brown plane over here isn't very interesting. So we're just going to select it and hit the delete key to get rid of it. And then we're going to come over here to the terrain menu and we're going to create a terrain to replace it with. You can see that that terrain popped up here. The terrain's a little unusual because its position isn't based in the center like most objects in Unity. It's actually based in the left bottom corner. So if I were to take my little guy here and place him at zero zero zero, you will see that he is over here. And the train says it's also at zero zero zero. So that's that point there. And you can see that he's centered himself on that point. His midsection is right at zero. And obviously the, the corner of the terrain is where its location is, so keep that in mind when you're moving it around. Uh, for now we are going to go into a top view here. And we can see that this is an awfully large terrain, much larger than what we're going to need. So we're going to shrink it. And to do that we'll come over here to the terrain menu again. And you'll see that these options here that were grayed out before are now available to us. And we can go to the set resolution option here. And we can see that it currently has a terrain width and length of 2000. Now when you're dealing with units in Unity it's usually good to think of them as meters. So you can think of this as being a 2000 by 2000 meter terrain. And that's very very much larger than we need. That's what 2 kilometers I guess. So we are going to decrease that to 200 meters. And the max height is currently set at 600 meters, and that's also much larger than we need. So we're going to make that 200 meters as well. So we'll have basically a square to deal with, uh, a cube rather. The height map resolution deals with how many vertexes squared we'll have for adding detail into our terrain, so we're going to leave that alone. The detail resolution has to deal with detail meshes that get planted on there. There's, It's actually kept track of in kind of like a texture map, so per pixel uh, or vertex. You can think of vertexes as pixels in, when you're dealing with height maps. Uh, so per vertex where how many vertexes you have on the strain to place details. There, that wasn't so hard. Now these two settings here, the control texture resolution, the base texture resolution base texture resolution have to deal with the splat maps, which we'll talk about in the next video. So for now we can safely leave those alone. And uh that is about all you need to know for this right here. So we'll just set the resolution. And you can see now if I zoom out that it's a good deal smaller than it used to be. We will then hit G or no, not hit G. I am thinking of Blender. <laughs> In Blender I can hit G to grab things and move them around. That does not work here. However, I can go over and you see this green square right here? This is a combination of the blue and the red axes. So if I click on the green square, I can move it in both of those freely. So I'll do that and I'll drag it over so that I am basically centered on where my character controller is. I'll go back into perspective here. And I will zoom in on my guys here. I'll move him back up with his cube buddies. 
Okay, so now that we have the terrain in place, we can start editing it. Uh, oh, actually, before we do that, you'll see that I created kind of like a prefab here. It's not exactly a prefab, because you notice that the terrain isn't blue, but it is linked back to here. This has the keeps the settings uh, for this resolution and other things. So we're going to call this mountain, and we're going to create a train folder to keep that in. As I said, it's good to keep things organized. Once you start getting more complex, it gets very easy to lose things in here. But since this isn't really a prefab, it doesn't have any settings, so once you have that in there, you can basically safely ignore the train folder now. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is add a bit of variation to the height of the train. All terrains have the terrain script attached to them. And they have certain brushes and things you can work with here. The first one we're going to look at here is the Raise and Lower Terrain Brush. They have some different things here. We're just going to go with the standard circular brush. And we're going to click and we're going to start raising some terrain. You'll notice that moved very fast and that's because I have the opacity on here kind of high. If you lower that, it kind of doesn't come up quite so fast. Now if I shift click, I can also lower the terrain using this tool. And this is kind of hard to see what's going on because there's no lighting here. And even if I move my point light down, it's not going to illuminate very much of this terrain. So there's a few things you can do. If you're going for a nighttime thing and you don't want to have kind of global illumination, you can turn off the scene lights while you're working with that button right there. And then you can see things much better. However, we're going to go for a daylight thing, so instead of just turning off the scene lights, we're going to convert this point light into a directional light. And directional light casts light in a single direction basically from from an infinite plane. So as I rotate this, it will light up my entire terrain as if coming from one direction. So that's really useful for simulating sunlight. We're going to have it kind of almost 90 degrees but not quite so that we get kind of like a sunset effect there. And then once you do that you can notice that no matter where I place this because it's just tracing the light in a direction from everywhere it doesn't really matter where I have this. So I can kind of just throw this off into the distance to get out of my way. And that will be our sun. Now if we want to match this up with the sky box here, we can see that the light should kind of be coming from that direction. So what we'll do is we'll rotate this guy kind of like that. And now the, the light matches more of what we have from our sky box. So if we hit play here, see that I'm standing on a bit of a hill boxes fell down the side of the hill there. You can see that we got it looks like the sun's coming from over there and it's kind of casting light. We've we've given the effect that's casting light onto the mountainside here. That's a good thing to keep in mind when you're placing your light is to make sure that it matches up if you're doing an outside scene, make sure it matches up with your skybox. Okay. So you can basically paint your terrain height however you want. I'm going to uh, take a break and in the next video I will have set up a little mountainside here and then we'll get into painting the splat textures.